car wash here in town. And as we were going to retrieve the car, I stepped off the curb and slipped in a puddle of soapy water, <laughs> almost crushing a poor baby on my way down. After I got up and collected myself, I went inside to speak to the manager about this. And his response to me was, what do you want me to do about it? My suggestion to him was that he clean up this mess before an old lady comes out here and breaks her hip, and then sues him for it. His impression of customer service on me was negative, and I've never, ever returned to that place again. How many times have I told this story? Well, another 32 times. <laughs> In my speech today, I will show you the, uh, give you an understanding of how to provide professional and efficient customer service. I will first start with the importance of providing the service, the skills needed, and then actually putting those skills into place. So let's first start with why it is important to build your customer relationships. Customers are what keeps your business going. If you don't have them, there is no profit, there is no growth, there is no repeat business. <clears throat> All of these things provide increased revenues for your, for your business. In a, pardon me. In an article by Susan Ward in 2004, she lists eight rules for professional service. One, always answer your phone. Two, don't make promises that you can't keep. Three, listen to your customer. Four, deal with complaints. Five, be helpful. Six, train your employees. And seven, take the extra steps needed to, to keep those customers. And eight, throw in something extra. All of these steps will ensure that you have repeat business, thus increasing your revenues. Another point to this is good word of mouth. In a book by Pete Blackshaw in 2008, he states that satisfied customers tell three friends, unsatisfied customers tell 3,000. Mm. With all the social media out there, the blog sites, websites, all kinds of things, this isn't an unrealistic number. I don't know about you, but I don't want people knowing, I don't want 3,000 people knowing bad things about me. Next, let's take why these things are important and apply them to our skills. Useful tools for training people, excuse me, pardon me, uh, important skills that all customer service people should have are the obvious ones. They should be friendly, courteous, helpful, wanting to bring that person back to where you, you do business. In a personal uh, interview with Cindy, Paul, a customer service supervisor for Provident Bank, a few of the things that she looks for in hiring a person is the body language that they convey. Are they wanting to help you? Are they making eye contact? Are they knowledgeable what, about what they're selling? If you don't know what you're selling, how can you sell it? Uh, on that same note, she states that she has to be a leader. How can she tell somebody to do something when she won't do it herself? This leads me into the John Adair Handbook for Management and Leadership. A good leader will always lead by example. So next, let's put those skills into place. Providing that good service. Listen to what your customer is saying. Pay attention. In a book of, in the book, in a book by, oh, excuse me, uh, in a book titled Business of Listening, A Practical Guide to Efficient Listening, uh, the writer states that you must hear a message, interpret it, evaluate it, and respond. Make sure you know what your customer is trying to tell to you. Another point in providing good service is welcoming your customer. How many times have we all walked in somewhere and not felt welcome, like we were interrupting somebody's conversation, nobody greeting us at the door? How does that make you feel as a customer? Doesn't make me want to spend my money at all. 
I shop locally at a store two times a month. One of the girls that works in there knows my name. The reason I come back is because she's always willing to help me. She knows who I am and she makes me feel valued as a customer. On that same note, providing good service, be a good problem solver. We don't always have a great experience when we go to buy something or, or go to the doctor's office. How do you solve that problem? How do you make that person feel good about what just happened? In an article dealing with difficult customer service on goodcustomerservice.org, there are five ways to resolve issues. Listen to what the person is saying. Remain quiet until they have finished saying what they're saying. Write it down if you need to. This shows that you are actively listening to what they are telling you. Apologize. How hard is it to say I'm sorry? It's the easiest thing you can do to make something right. And resolve that issue. Make sure that it's taken care of before you go home. That'll make that person feel valued and wanted and appreciated. So today we've gone over the understanding of giving good customer service, um, the importance of it, the skills needed to do it, and actually providing that service. Now, I don't know if everybody here has been in sort of customer service situation, but I know I have, and we all deal with it every day. And if we can apply these tips and tools, it might make each of our days a little bit better.